18th September 2024 we have a lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces it is the first eclipse on a Pisces Virgo axis in nine years so this area of your life uh, is up for big transformation over the course of the next two years when we have eclipses uh, in Pisces and in Virgo both solar and lunar however this eclipse is only the first one and it's taking place as the nodes of faith are still on the Aries Libra axis as of 18th of September we still have two more eclipses one in Libra and one in Aries so we're not really fully into the storyline of eclipses across the Pisces Virgo axis this is only the first one um, and it's not really really full-blown in a sense that the nodes of faith are not on that axis yet um, so what this eclipse primarily does is that it opens a little bit of the curtain to show us what is no longer sustainable and what's no longer tenable you know, in our lives on that axis specifically in our Pisces house uh, and it's giving us glimpses on what is about to go away irreversibly and uh, to leave up an open space in our lives for what is the new thing to come another significant aspect of this eclipse is that the ruler of the eclipse Jupiter is going to be in a square to Saturn and this is one of several uh, full moons and new moons that are going to be uh, locked in the uh, Jupiter Saturn square which means that this uh, eclipse is part of a, a bit of a longer narrative that started already in mid-August um, with the first Saturn Jupiter square but we're gonna have several of those we're gonna have another one in December which is again going to be um, across Gemini and Pisces but then in a sort of a square Saturn and Jupiter are going to move um, Saturn in the sign of Aries and Jupiter in the sign of Cancer and there they're going to have another square so this is an energy we're going to be living in for the next um, at least until the end of 2025 as well um, so yeah strap yourselves it's going to be a long story and the art element of this eclipse that's very important is that it's happening over Neptune. Neptune is in the final degrees of the sign of Pisces. Neptune is associated with the same things that the sign of Pisces is associated. So we're having uh, an overflowing of overflowing of energy of overflowing. So things are not really being measured here. Things are going way out of proportion. Uh, we're not very clear we're not very realistic about what's happening and there is a sense of martyrdom a sense of um, perhaps injustice a sense of uh, we weren't very clear about what we we're doing there was some confusion fog delusion in the sky and now we're having to pay the consequences of it but the consequences appear to be too harsh and so make us kind of like a martyr and kind of like we're having to to stand face to face with the consequences of what we did but these weren't the consequences we thought they were going to be and this isn't really the significance the magnitude and the impact that we thought we're going to have to deal with and lastly all the eclipses that we're going to have on the Pisces Virgo axis over the course of the next two years well year and a half two years roughly there uh, are going to add more um color and detail more developments to what is already a full house and a packed of developments area of our lives and what I mean by that is that we have Neptune in the sign of Pisces has been there for over a decade uh, has dissolved the foundations of our lives in that area of our lives and then on the 7th of March last year Saturn entered the scene and started to bring more solidity and more groundedness more cold heart a realism and more sobriety and more adult like approach to that area of our lives and so Saturn as it's coming closer to conjunction with Neptune is uh, bringing our ideas back down to earth and back down to reality and asking us to either throw out of the window these dreams and ideas that we're entertaining that are completely unsustainable or asking us to put in the very hard work to turn them into reality um, otherwise they're gonna have to go out the window um, and this is a 2.5 three year dynamic that's going to happen from the begin from the moment Saturn entered the sign of Pisces all the way until it exits it completely fully moves into the sign of Aries and with the eclipses with the nodes of faith moving on that axis basically that means that this process of grounding and slowly reconciling beautiful unrealistic dreams 
about how things work in that area of our lives. How is it that we can achieve a result? Um, these ideas that we're entertaining are not um, practical, they're not sustainable. They are more or less, but very likely more um, divorced uh, with and from reality. And so Saturn is asking us to reconcile them. And this is going to be a long process. It's not going to be a one-off thing. But with the eclipses starting to happen on that axis as well, they're basically bringing pivotal moments, really rushed kind of um, one-off events that really change and overhaul everything. Um, and again, doing so towards the overarching goal, the overarching process that's happening in the sign of Pisces, uh, which is um, really... Um, parting ways with, uh, with what is not sustainable, what is not realistic, and um, adopting a more productive, more um, leg legacy-oriented approach uh, when it comes to the Pisces house of our charts. And that said, uh, let's move on to the forecast for all of the 12 zodiac signs. Aries suns and Aries risings. 18th of September 2024, a lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces in your 12th house of um, hidden enemies, uh, the stabs in the back, self-sabotaging behaviors, um, area of our lives that we don't have full visibility over. Uh, this is where all the problematic things <laughs> lurk and um, come out in the most inappropriate times. But on a bit of a brighter note, uh, this is your service access. So this has to do with your nine to five office job and um, the things that are happening there that you know of, but also the things that are happening there that you don't know of. Uh, the things that your managers are not telling you or the things that your colleagues and co-workers are saying behind your back or some such thing. Um, this is the first eclipse on the Pisces Virgo axis in nine years. So your sector of service, your sector of uh, nine to five office job, the way that you structure your life, your day to day life, what is it that you spend most hours on? Is this what you want to invest in? Or, you know, are your priorities really lying elsewhere? And are you able to invest in time in what is indeed a priority for you? Or is there something that's preventing you from that? Basically, your 9 to 5 office job, as well as uh, your day to day routine, your day to day life, what is it that you do? What time do you wake up? What time do you go to bed? How, how tired? What is it that you have to do over the day? These kinds of things are up for quite a serious upgrade and quite serious renovation over the course of the next year and a half, two years, when we have eclipses there. This is only the first eclipse and it is a bit of a weaker one simply because it is a lunar eclipse um, with the nodes of faith still in the Aries and um, in the signs of Aries and Libra. The nodes of faith are still on your first house, the seventh house axis. We still have two more eclipses that are seriously going to impact your uh, career, your professional path, your partnerships as well. We have quite a complex choreography coming up um, across uh, your angular houses as well. Um, but nevertheless, when it comes to your nine to five office job, uh, in your colleagues and co-workers when it comes to your um, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis for work uh, there is a wind of change blowing there and it starts kind of with this lunar eclipse um, again it's a weaker eclipse but still there's definitely you know a sense of realization that um, things are about to change in a way that um, is not it is just becomes kind of very clear because this is a full moon and it's a moment of illumination but it becomes kind of very clear that we're not we're not going to be able to go on as we've done before so it is an ending when it comes to um some uh very likely some sort of uh, nine to five office job project colleagues co-workers hiring recruitment uh, new team members, that kind of thing. Uh, something that you did in March of last year and it's coming to an ending in a way that is emotional and in a way that is kind of foggy. There isn't really that much uh, clarity and visibility because the full, the full moon lunar eclipse is conjoining Neptune. So there is a potential for um, a lot of emotions, uh, but potentially people being overly emotional 
but also potentially developments that are not very clear happening behind the scenes. In a sense, there's something happening in your 9 to 5 office job that you're not fully aware of. Something is ending, someone is leaving, a project is uh, being discontinued or something like that. Um, but you're not really being given the full picture. You're not really being told the full story here. And this um, eclipse is... Um, ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter is in your third house of skilling, upskilling, reskilling, um, communication, business proposals, business plans, uh, project proposals, import, export, communication uh, with, you know, other people doing like outreach and reaching out to different people to kind of ask them to work together or something like that. Um, and Jupiter is going to be in a T-square to Saturn and Mercury across the Pisces Virgo axis across your 12th house, 6th house axis. So indeed, it indicates that there is um, an ending when it comes to uh, some sort of uh, project, when it comes to rejection of some sort of business proposal. Um, potentially an ending when it comes to a colleague or a co-worker, somebody might be leaving, um, a project might be taken away from you. Um, th there could be something that you've been writing and researching and hoping to take off the ground, but it's not really panning out. Um, and with the eclipse on Neptune, also there is a sense of kind of disappointment. Something that started kind of promising ends up in a way that, that leaves a bittersweet sense of disappointment. It doesn't mean that you don't get anything. It doesn't mean that it's a complete failure. It doesn't mean that nothing... Um, nothing worthwhile came out of it. It's not that bad, but um, there is a sense of disappointment. And then with Saturn and Mercury so powerful in such a conversation in the sky across the same axis, there is a sense of coldness and disillusionment. Um, and one thing that you want to keep in mind is that you shouldn't be too... Um, disillusioned right now because there's more of that to come uh, and what I mean by that is uh, that this eclipse is locked in the Saturn Jupiter square but that Saturn Jupiter square is going to be a long story it becomes exact on the 19th of August that is when it became exact for the first time then Jupiter is going to keep moving, but then it's going to uh, station to go retrograde. And it's going to meet in an exact square to Saturn again during Sagittarius season. And um, so we're going to have that exact at least one more time across Pisces and Gemini. And then, by the way, we're going to have Saturn and Jupiter in a square across Aries and Cancer. Uh, because the two planets are going to kind of move in a lockstep out of the signs where they're right now and move into your first and fourth houses. So that's going to be a long story. But what I meant, uh, what I started saying is that we're going to have this eclipse locked in the Saturn Jupiter square, the new moon in Virgo, so a new beginning when it comes to colleagues, co-workers, projects, day-to-day -day job. Um, the new moon is going to be locked in the Saturn Jupiter square then when we get to Sagittarius season, we're going to have another um, another uh, new moon that's going to be locked in that square. And then next year in March, we're going to have another eclipse on a Pisces Virgo axis again uh, in conversation with Saturn, Jupiter and Neptune, which means that whatever challenges Saturn, Jupiter is bringing on for you, and I have a separate video on that, uh, but whatever challenges this is bringing, whatever tensions between a desire to to write, to work on some sort of content, to put out some sort of educational material, um, import, export, to organize some sort of um, short distance trip, to do outreach, to communicate, to produce, uh, let's say, courses, certification programs, or to take courses and certification programs, this is going to keep coming up against some roadblocks from... Um, from your nine to five office job, from the colleagues and co-workers, from some sort of uh, developments that are not always within your field of vision. People are doing things in your organization, in your nine to five office job that you're not at all aware of, but they impact you and kind of, kind of mess up your calculations, if I can put it that way. And this isn't going to be something that's going to start and end on the 19th of August with the first square, but rather we're going to have several lunar cycles and eclipses locked in that. And so 
the challenges of that um, square are going to be embedded in the lunar cycles that are going to run for six months afterwards. So the earliest you can expect to meaningfully navigate outside of this square is going to be the summer next year, right after the um, right after the um, full moon in the sign of Sagittarius during Gemini season. So um, stock up on patience, which is not the easiest things for Aries, but be prepared that it's not going to be a one-off thing. It's going to be a challenge that's going to keep coming on and off. And in some way, shape or form, it's going to impact um, kind of uh, longer developments um, um, tied to the lunar cycle. Taurus, Sun and Taurus Risings, 18th of September, we have our first lunar eclipse on the Pisces Virgo axis in nine years, which is going to open a sequence of very significant developments when it comes to the communities that you are a part of, the larger networks and groups that you move together with in society, the people that you are surrounded by, the people that you hang out with, and also your own business, your own creative projects, um, the things that you feel you identify with and those areas of your life where you feel that you are the creator and you are the one who is um, developing the idea and then implementing it and turning it into reality. So if you are working on a work of art, if you have your own business, if you're in charge of some project, if you have a pet project um, and also the people with whom all of these things connect you and the communities that they make you a part of, there are going to be significant changes happening there over the course of the next a year and a half, two years when we have eclipses there. This is the first eclipse uh, in nine years. So significant changes um, coming up uh, in the year and a half to come. However, this eclipse is the first eclipse. And the nodes of faith are still on the Aries Libra axis, which means that this eclipse is a bit of a weaker one. And because it's a lunar eclipse, um, this is more internal, more emotional ending. This is an eclipse in the sign of Pisces. It's a water sign. And it is conjunct Neptune, which means that there is a sense of a chapter that is ending when it comes to the people we are surrounded by. It's a moment of realization that um, the communities that you've been part of up until this point are no longer the communities that you want to be a part of going forward. It's a moment that you realize that between you and the people with whom you hang out uh, in a private capacity or professionally um, do not see eye to eye um, about things, about whatever it is that you're fighting for. This is a moment when you come to realize that your colleagues or co-workers uh, come from paths and backgrounds that are very different and that uh, you find it difficult to feel at home with them. Or it's a moment when you realize that um, the friend circles that you're surrounded by, the circles within which you have been introduced by virtue of where you live, where you work, where you studied, um, all of this, there's a sense of a closure coming. And with Neptune, there is a sense of um, a disappointment of some kind, something that promised to be good, something that held great promises is actually not amounting to that much. With Neptune also, there's a potential for martyrdom. So it's possible that you are leaving communities in a way that makes you seem um, guilty or a way that um, involves some sort of sacrifice. The ruler Jupiter is going to be squaring Saturn and Mercury, which indeed indicates an ending of some sort of contract or um, an ending of some sort of idea that has been driving you up until this point. There is a sense with Saturn and Jupiter that um, you've reached a, some sort of maximum, how far you can go in a certain direction. And um, you now realize that you need to take on a more sober approach. You want to keep in mind that Jupiter is in your second house of values, also resources. So you come to realize that your values are probably not aligned with the values of this group of people, of these circles and these communities 
or you come to realize that there are kind of insurmountable differences in how you want to deal with resources and finances. You want to keep in mind that the Saturn-Jupiter square is quite a significant development across your second and your 11th houses, um, indicating some sort of clash exactly between values and the communities that you're a part of. And it's worth noting that um, after the full moon lunar eclipse on the 18th of September, we're going to have a new moon in the sign of Virgo, which is going to be caught in that Saturn Jupiter square again. And then during Sagittarius season, we're also going to have a new moon there, which is also going to be caught in that Saturn Jupiter square. And then next year in March, we're going to have uh, another set of eclipses. Well, we're going to have one eclipse on a Pisces Virgo axis, but then we're also going to have a new moon there. And they're also going to be caught in that Saturn Jupiter square. Square. So this Saturn Jupiter square is quite important and it's going to be quite a kind of like long standing development that you're going to have to work through over time. And this became exact for the first time in the third week of um, of August, around the 19th of August, and then it went on for a couple of days. So think about what was going on at the time and do know that it's not going to be uh, that these developments are not really going to be a one off thing, but rather it's going to be something that you're going to have to work through over several uh, new moons and full moons and uh, at least one more eclipse. Gemini suns and Gemini risings 18th of September 2024 we have a lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces happening in your 10th house of career public image reputation this is the top of your sky the most visible part of your life and this is the first eclipse that we're going to have there in nine years and it starts a series of eclipses that are going to go on for about a year and a half, two years, uh, during which you're going to experience pivotal developments when it comes to where you live and where you work. What is it that you are known for uh, to society and what is it that you are building as a legacy? Every nine years there are significant changes there and we're now entering this cycle. Uh, it's going to be a process, it's going to go on for over a year, almost two years um, but it starts now with this first lunar eclipse you want to keep in mind that lunar eclipses are more internal so it's not a big external development it's more of an inner thing um, however it's happening on top of your sky the very visible um, well the most visible part of your life the nodes of the moon are still on the Aries Libra axis which means that this e the eclipse is going to be a little bit weaker it's not as grand um, as it would have been if we if the nodes of fate had firmly moved in but nevertheless it is an important development again it's a bit internal there's something ending when it comes to how you are perceived uh, when it comes to relationships with figures of authority when it comes to your career when it comes to uh, how is it that you are managing things and, and what is it that you are leaving behind as, it, as traces behind you and what is the kind of impression that you're giving to other people you know kind of like image management um, how is it that you are doing your own image management? How is it that you are crafting the perception that other people have about you? The eclipse is going to be conjoined Neptune within three degrees, which means that there is a sense of uh, a little bit of a disappointment, something that had started with a lot of promises and, and held that opportunity uh, promise for, for a great legacy or for an opportunity at least to build something new that would indeed kind of like put you on a map something here is ending with a little bit of sense of disappointment um, something that it didn't pan out quite as grand as you thought it will it doesn't mean that you didn't build anything and it doesn't mean that you're not leaving any legacy behind but it's for sure not as amazing as 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 the initial promise was as you thought it would be and also be careful because um, this eclipse could also indicate some sort of martyrdom and it can indicate some sort of sacrifice. So there is a possibility that you kind of um, look a little bit um, as if you are um, being a victim here or it could uh, look a little bit like... Um, you are being very emotional and you're you're going a little bit overboard with the emotions in, in in a public sphere in a public space in your career 
the ruler of this full moon is Jupiter and it is in your first house. So this really impacts your career and it impacts the way that you want to go uh, forward when it comes to building your life and designing your own life's journey. We are living caught in the Saturn Jupiter square right now. Um, Jupiter will be squaring Saturn within five degrees and it will be squaring Mercury as well, which can indicate the ending of some sort of contract, some sort of contractual relationship, also some sort of rejection. With Saturn and Jupiter squared across your first house and your tent houses, um, there is a desire on your part to grow, to expand, to learn more, but there are some blockages that are coming from your career, from the way that you are known to the world. It's kind of like you want to do something, but you don't have, let's say, the resume or the qualifications to instantly jump there. And so there is some um, there are some opportunities coming your way and you want to make use of them right here, right now, because they may not come second time. However, um, because you are not quite there yet, the, uh, career wise, because of something that you're doing, something that you're bogged down working on or a field within which that you are attached to is not allowing you to, t to make, you know, the most of these opportunities right here, right now. And so you have to kind of, um, in a sense, lower your expectations or um, try a more sober approach that takes into account the realities That's, that sometimes the way that we want to be is not the way that other people see us and the vision that we want to impose about ourselves is not something that other people might be uh, ready to accept without any questions. I have a separate video on the Jupiter Saturn square, but you want to keep in mind that this Saturn Jupiter square is going to go on for quite a while. It became exact in the third week of August. Um, you can go back and think about what was happening at the time for you. And that's important because this eclipse is kind of caught in that square. But then the new moon that we have in Virgo is also going to be caught in that square. And then during Sagittarius season, we're going to have a new moon there, which is also going to be caught in the Saturn Jupiter square and then next year um, we will have uh, an eclipse um, on the Pisces Virgo axis which is again gonna be caught even more firmly actually between Neptune and Saturn and Jupiter is gonna be there again so um, these blockages that I'm talking about these problems this square is gonna be a long story it's not gonna be really a one-off thing it's gonna be a problem and a challenge and an obstacle that you're gonna have to work through over the course of the next at least um, six months and it's going to be quite serious every time that we have um, a mutable sign season. Cancer Suns and Rising 18th of September 2024, we have a lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces happening in your ninth house of long distance travel, foreign lands, foreign cultures, education, mentors, academic pursuits, academia, relationships, mentors, I think I said that, um, and also um, higher learning, higher education, getting a degree of some kind, um, learning about religion, philosophy, expanding your mind to learn about new ideas that are really not typical of um, the place where you were born and where you live. This is um, a lunar eclipse, which means that it's a bit more internal. And it also is the first eclipse that we're going to have um, on that axis, your third house, ninth house axis of the mind and where it takes you. Uh, this is the first eclipse in nine years and it starts a series of eclipses that are going to go on for about a year and a half, two years, uh, during which that part of your life and uh, of your um, chart is going to be very significantly upgraded and renovated. In about two years time, you're going to see very differently topics um, related to the, to the larger world and, and what your place in that world is, where you stand vis-a-vis -vis other people and who are these people with whom you see eye to eye and who are these people that have very different views and, and what is behind their views. That kind of, uh, of a conversation and a dynamic and a sequence of changes is being initiated with this uh, first eclipse. Again, it's a process. This is only the first eclipse and the nodes of faith are still on the Aries Libra axis. So this eclipse in a sense is a little bit weaker. However, um, it's conjoined Neptune. So if you are um, ending some sort of a degree, ending some sort of court case, if you are ending some sort of um, 
um, journey that you took uh, to another foreign land, foreign continent, if you went on a sabbatical to, to do a short course elsewhere, um, if you took some time off of your work to uh, go teach English in, in Africa or something like that, um, if you have been involved in some sort of publishing a book or uh, doing some sort of academic research, uh, the ending is here and it's quite big and significant because it is an eclipse, but it is conjoined Neptune, which indicates that there is a sense, a little, a little bit of sense of disappointment. There's something that didn't quite live up to the expectations. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that when it's over, you feel kind of like, ugh. Is that what all of this was about? It's kind of like putting in a lot of effort and a lot of work into, let's say, graduating and writing that thesis and, and it's so much work and in the end you're there and it's kind of like, oh, yeah, but it, it doesn't feel the way I thought it will feel. It doesn't live up to the grandness that I thought it will be. Um, and the ruler of this eclipse is Jupiter. Jupiter is um, in your Gemini 12th house, which is a house that has to do with spirituality. It has to do with, uh, again, foreign places, but kind of more hidden, less popular, less fancy, more quiet, not that noisy, not that touristy foreign places. Um, and uh, it's squaring Saturn in your Pisces ninth house and squaring Mercury in your um, Virgo third house, which basically means that indeed there is an ending of some kind with Saturn also involved. Um, and it's possibly the ending of some sort of um, intellectual pursuit, ending of a contract, or finally committing to paper and to form and shape some sort of knowledge content. If you have been involved in some sort of project at work where you are writing a business plan, a business proposal, um, if you are involved in organizing something that involves a lot of communication and coordination with a community, there is um, an ending to that as well. You're reaching the final stage of these um, organizations and the ending is is a little bit bittersweet in a sense, um, again, because it doesn't live up to the expectations. It's not as amazing as you thought it will be. And um, with Saturn Mercury, there is also the possibility of a rejection. If you've been writing a business plan or a business proposal, uh, if you've been hoping to get that project or to get that degree or to get into that university, um, there is a possibility, it's very likely, that the outcome isn't necessarily exactly what you wanted it to be. With Jupiter in your 12th house, there is that possibility of a lot of wishful thinking that ends up kind of like stabbing you in the back. You want to keep in mind that because this ending is related to an eclipse, that's the first eclipse opening a series of eclipses that are going to go on for over a year, this ending isn't really that kind of... Uh, complete total ending that leaves you high and dry but rather it's the ending that clears the way for a new beginning and that full-blown new beginning is going to start when um when the nodes of fate finally shift on the pisces virgo axis which is going to happen in the, in the second half of next year um and one other thing that's worth mentioning here is that this eclipse is in a way caught in the saturn jupiter square i have a separate video on that uh, so i'm not going to go into too much detail about what that means here however it's worth mentioning that the, this is the full moon um eclipse in Pisces is caught in that Saturn Jupiter square and then the new moon in Virgo is also going to be caught in that square and then during Sagittarius season we're going to have a new moon which is also going to be caught in the Saturn Jupiter square and then next year we're going to have an eclipse again on the Pisces Virgo axis which again will be caught in the Saturn Jupiter square. So this Saturn Jupiter square is quite important here when it comes to uh, reinventing your 12th house, 6th house, 3rd house, and 9th houses, they are all going to experience changes that are related to that Saturn Jupiter square. And it first became exact in the third week of August, around the 19th of August, and then for a couple of days after that. Um, so you want, you want to go back and think about what was happening around that time and know that this isn't really a one-off thing. It's going to be a kind of like longer, larger dynamic that you're going to have to work through over the course of several months, um, potentially a year, 
uh, meaning six months after the next eclipse, which is also going to be caught in that Saturn Jupiter square. Um, so yeah, uh, be prepared for a lengthy process of, uh, of realignment and resolving the challenges there. Leo suns and risings 18th of September 2024 we have a lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces happening in your eighth house of joint resources finances savings um, larger financial instruments and investments um, also all of the assets that you co-own co-use co-share with another person um, this is the first eclipse on a Pisces Virgo axis in nine years and it opens a sequence of eclipses that are going to go on for about a year and a half two years after which um, your finances are going to be quite significantly changed and uh, the way that you earn and the way that you uh, spend money are not going to look the same this is going to be a long process it's not going to happen with this one eclipse also keep in mind that this eclipse is only the first eclipse it's a lunar eclipse so it's a bit more internal and also the nodes of faith are still on the aries libra axis and will be on the aries libra axis for months next year as well um, so this eclipse in a way is a little bit weaker however it's still an eclipse it's still kind of a major um, development when it comes to um, who is it that you are dependent upon when it comes to finances and uh, who is it that you make money together with uh, that's also a form of dependence um, spouse if you're dependent on them as well um, and also how do you um, manage these resources um, how is it that you um, are allowed or not to make decisions and as a result of that what is it that you feel in terms of power do you have power or not do you feel safe or not um, are you comfortable or not with that uh, with the way that the other person impacts um, the way that you manage uh, this shared asset this eclipse is conjoined Neptune which indicates a sense of um, and it is a lunar eclipse which indicates a sense of disappointment and disillusionment and potentially a scam so be very careful if you're closing some financial deals i actually wouldn't recommend that you do um but with neptune so powerful in this kind of situation with a lunar eclipse in pisces which is very emotional there is a sense of emotional ending when it comes to some sort of financial um developments uh, something is ending and it it held the promise of being great but it didn't quite live up to the promise um and at the time of the eclipse the ruler jupiter is going to be in your gemini 11th house of other people communities that you're a part of uh, the larger social movements that you subscribe to the circles within which you have been introduced the people that you associate with um, and Jupiter will be squaring Saturn and squaring Mercury. Saturn and Mercury are across the Pisces Virgo axis opposed to each other, which can again indicate some, the ending of some sort of contract um, or some sort of rejection. If you have applied for a loan, for example, from the bank or something like that, this could be the rejection and the resultant sense of disillusionment and disappointment that financially you're not able to do that if you have been thinking about uh, piling your resources with someone in order to buy something or to achieve something to invest in a business to invest in some sort of project this could be a moment when you realize that it's not gonna it's not gonna be that easy and it's not gonna work out that magically and there's gonna be a need for a reassessment of things um, and uh, potentially setting out on a course that's more sober more mature more limited of scope um, that kind of things with that Saturn uh, Jupiter square it could uh, bring to the surface um, misalignments between what you think what you believe in uh, where is it that you want to go with your public role and um, in society where is it that you want to push society to go towards and um, what other people are ready to commit to you want to keep in mind also that this um, eclipse is locked in the saturn jupiter square 
but the new moon in Virgo is also going to be locked in the Saturn Jupiter square. When we get to Sagittarius season in December this year, uh, the new moon there is also going to be locked in a Saturn Jupiter square. And next year in March, we're going to have another eclipse on the Pisces Virgo axis. That one is also going to be locked in a Saturn Jupiter square. So um, this dynamic, which first um, became exact in the third week of August, on the 19th of August, and then a couple of days after that, um, this is going to be a longer dynamic that you're going to need some months to get through and possibly a year because the eclipse um, next March is also going to be locked in that Saturn Jupiter square. And so um, six months after that, uh, you might still be uh, finding yourself kind of trying to resolve and to work through um, these challenges in these dynamics. So um, overall, it's quite an important development, the Saturn Jupiter square, it impacts not only this eclipse, but um, a lot of the developments that are going to take place across uh, the mutable signs. And so the houses that they rule um, in, in your chart, uh, for a good year to come. So uh, that's kind of what's the, the larger background against which this um, a bit this ending of disappointment, disillusionment, potentially a scam um, is taking place um, on the 18th of September. Virgo suns and Virgo risings, 18th September, lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces, happening in your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one relationships and alliances, business as well as personal. This is the first eclipse uh, on the Pisces Virgo axis in nine years, and it sets off a chain of events that is going to unfold over uh, the next year and a half, two years, really, um, after which you, your partnerships, your life direction, the way that you imagine yourself and what is it that you could be in this life um, is going to look quite differently. Uh, this is a big uh, process of upgrade and renovation, reimagining yourself and setting off on a very new path. But again, it's a process and it starts a little bit with this eclipse. And I say a little bit because the nodes of faith are still on the Aries Libra axis and they are going to be there. We still have um, two more eclipses there. So this is really um, early days of that process of upgrade and renovation. It's a lunar eclipse, which means it's a bit more internal and it is an ending in your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one partnerships. It's conjoined Neptune, which means that there is an emotional ending um, in a one-on-one -on -one partnership. Could be business, could be personal. It's very likely to be a business one and it's to some extent likely to uh, be related to a manager, to a management figure, somebody uh, with a position of power over you. Um, and with uh, a lunar eclipse in Neptune, um, there is a sense of a disappointment, something that held the promise of being amazing. Turns out that, it, that it's not that amazing. It, it didn't live up to the potential. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that it wasn't as amazing as hoped for. There's also the potential for martyrdom. So um, someone could be blamed or victimized, uh, some, something like that. And with Neptune in Pisces, there is also the potential for a lot of emotions when it comes to this ending um, that... Uh, People could be more emotional, you could be more emotional, but there is um, a sense of kind of emotions being definitely in overdrive during a lunar eclipse and on Neptune. Also, Neptune is fogginess, so there is a chance that, that this ending in relationships um, comes amid a lot of fog. In a sense, there isn't really clear visibility what exactly is happening there. Why is this person leaving or why is the relationship changing in this kind of way? Um, it's not very clear, but indeed it is an ending. And this uh, lunar eclipse is um, ruled by Jupiter in your Gemini 10th house. This is why um, I'm kind of inclined to think that this is a professional ending. But again, it could also, with Jupiter in your 10th house, it could also um, indicate the ending of, um, you know, kind of like a, a more personal romantic partnership as well. 
Um, and Jupiter will be squaring Saturn in your seventh house and squaring Mercury, your ruling planet, in your first house. With Saturn-Mercury opposition, um, there is uh, the potential for the ending of a contract or a rejection of some kind, um, the ending of an idea, and um, the ending of the way that you thought you can be in partnerships. Again, because Mercury here is not just an indicator of ideas, but it is also an indicator of you and your identity. And with Saturn, with this opposition to Saturn, um, there is a way that you thought you can be. You realize you you can't or you shouldn't because it's not um, it's not necessarily leading to the outcomes that you're hoping for. Um, and with uh, Jupiter squaring Saturn you are ending a partnership in a way that um, puts the spotlight on your public persona. It's potentially the ending of a partnership that kind of puts you under the spotlight, uh, asks of you to take on a little bit of a more leadership role. It could also be that there is an ending that kind of brings um, into your life a manager that is more Jupiterian, so Pisces or Sagittarius. One thing that's very important to keep in mind here, especially for you because you're a mutable sign, is that this eclipse is caught in a Saturn-Jupiter square. And then the new moon in the sign of Virgo, which is your personal rebirth moment and new beginning this year, is also going to be caught in the Saturn-Jupiter square. And then when we get to Sagittarius season in December, um, the new moon there is also going to be caught in the Saturn Jupiter square. In the next year, during uh, Pisces season, we're going to have another eclipse on a Pisces Virgo axis. That one's also going to be caught um, a little bit in that Saturn um, Jupiter square and between Saturn and Neptune, which basically means that this Saturn Jupiter square, which became exact on the 19th of August and was um, exact for a few days afterwards, um, is going to be quite a, a long-term challenge to go through and it's not going to be something that you can kind of resolve very quickly. It's going to drag on and on and require you to work through it um, kind of gradually over the course of potentially um, at least six months but possibly a year. Libra suns and Libra risings, 18th September, a lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces happening in your uh, Pisces sixth house of day-to-day -day work and time management. How is it that you live your life on a day-to-day -day basis? This lunar eclipse is opening a series of very pivotal changes in that area of your sky that's going to go on for about a year and a half, two years, uh, after which your nine to five office job as well as the way that you live your life on a day-to-day -day basis are going to be, be very transformed and are going to look significantly different. This is only the first eclipse, it's only the beginning of this process and arguably because the nodes of faith are still on the Aries Libra axis, uh, they haven't shifted yet on a Pisces Virgo axis and they we still have two more eclipses on the um, Aries Libra axis. This eclipse is indeed a little bit weaker. It's not a kind of a grand opening of these changes and it's a lunar eclipse so again it's a bit more internal but nevertheless um, the wind of change is blowing when it comes to um, your nine to five office job and what is it that you give your uh, the hours of your life to. How is it that you are allocating the time that you have on this planet so to speak. A lunar eclipse is an ending of some kind. Uh, it's conjunct Neptune, which can indicate that it is a very emotional ending. It's also um, very likely a bit disappointing in a sense that um, the reality didn't really live up to the dream. Uh, you had higher expectations of this uh, job, of this project at work. You had higher hopes for this uh, new colleague or this new relationship at work. Um, but it's not quite turning out as amazing as you thought it will. Um, at the time of this um, eclipse, um, Jupiter, the ruler of the eclipse, is going to be in your ninth house of global expansion. Um, academics, university, publishing, uh, marketing campaigns, legal matters, long-distance travel, 
something uh, kind of like learning about um, foreign lands, foreign cultures, um, learning about different religions, mentors as well. And Jupiter will be um, squaring Saturn in your Pisces sixth house and squaring Mercury um, in your Virgo twelfth house. So with Saturn Mercury opposition, there is the sense of an ending of a contract or ending of an idea, a rejection of some kind, rejection of, let's say, a written proposal or something like that. Um, and uh, with the square to Jupiter, your desire to grow, to learn, to be involved with the larger world out there is coming up against some sort of roadblock that's coming from um, from your day-to-day -day job. Um, it, it is kind of uh, materializing and you are definitely kind of like reaching an important milestone, but then there is an ending um, and, and kind of the potential is not really fully realized, so to speak. Um, you want to keep in mind that um, this um, eclipse is kind of locked between the Saturn and Jupiter square, but the new moon in the sign of Virgo is also going to be locked in that square. And then when we get to Sagittarius season, um, there's uh, going to be a new moon there that's also going to be locked in the Saturn Jupiter square. And then next year we have another eclipse on a Pisces Virgo axis uh, in March. And that one's also going to be locked in between Neptune and Saturn, and uh, Jupiter is also going to be hanging out there. So um, this is going to be a, kind of a challenge and a roadblock between your 9 to 5 office job and your desire to learn and to explore. Um, that's going to take a while to work through. It's not going to be something that can be resolved. It's not a one-off thing. It's going to take a while to resolve at least six months, but possibly also a year after the eclipse next year. Um, so yeah, the uh, houses of your chart that are occupied by the mutable signs are going to be caught in that uh, tension between wanting to expand, but not necessarily having the physical infrastructure to support that, um, and that dynamic and how you, how you work through it and how do you reconcile um, grand ideas and, and beautiful dreams with what's actually doable and, and practical within the limits of, of your um, tangible situation. And that's going to be kind of like a dynamic that's going to go on for quite a while. Of note, the Jupiter-Saturn square became exact on the 19th of August and was exact for a few days afterwards. So think about what was happening at the time and do know that whatever challenges you came up against, uh, they're going to it's going to take a little bit of strategizing and a little bit of downsizing the ambition and maybe the, the dream again to reconcile it with reality. Um, it's going to take a while to work through it. It's not it's not really a one off thing. It's uh, we have lunar cycles and arg arguably even eclipse cycles locked in that dynamic. So um, even if in the beginning it didn't look quite important, um, it's going to end up having a more significant impact. Um, on your mutable houses. Scorpio Suns and Scorpio Risings, 18th September this year, we have a lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces happening in your fifth house of creativity. This is the first eclipse that we have on the Pisces Virgo axis in nine years. Uh, we, over the course of the next year and a half, two years, we're going to have a several pivotal events that are going to completely transform this area of your life. Um, and this eclipse is only the kind of like, it's not even the fully opening act because the nodes of faith are still uh, on the Aries Libra axis. And this is a lunar eclipse. So it's internal. It's um, kind of a low key ending. It's not really a big development externally. Um, so it is kind of a preview of what is it that you're going to have to let go of in your life um, before the real action of rebuilding and redesigning that area of your life uh, starts when when the nodes of faith fully shift in and we start having 
full-blown eclipses uh, on the Pisces Virgo axis. And so this is a lunar eclipse in your fifth house. This is uh, and it's conjoined Neptune. So this is an ending in the chapter when it comes to a creative project that you're working on. It's an ending um, when it comes to the way that you um, deal with your kids, the way that you build your relationship with them. Um, and it's an ending when it comes to if you have your own business, if you have been um, invested in some sort of creative work of art, if you've been invested in something that gives you the opportunity to fully kind of carve out your own individuality, there is an ending there. And uh, with the conjunction to Neptune, it indicates that um, there is a sense of a little bit of Ill disillusionment, a little bit of disappointment, a little bit um, like you are there and you're kind of I guess getting what you want but it doesn't feel as amazing as it as it could have it it's not as amazing as you thought it will be there is a sense of disappointment and a sense of to some extent maybe sacrifice in the sense that you gave a lot of yourself to achieve that but it's not really paying back as well as you thought it will um the ruler of this eclipse is jupiter and jupiter is in your gemini eighth house of shared resources and shared finances and it's squaring saturn in your pisces um, fifth house and squaring also mercury um, in your virgo 11th house so saturn opposite mercury is indeed the ending of some sort of uh, contract a rejection of some sort of written proposal um, and with jupiter involved uh, squaring saturn um, in your um, from your eighth house there is a financial component to it in a sense this could be about the ending of a project because a partner is leaving or rejection of a proposal because the partner doesn't have the finances um, that um, that kind of thing um, or uh, for example you're not able to uh, provide for your kid in a way that you want to or you have to kind of disappoint the kid a little bit because of uh, some sort of financial woes or developments um, that you have with shared resources. It's good to keep in mind that the this eclipse is kind of locked in a Jupiter-Saturn square, which first became exact on the 19th of August and a few days afterwards. Um, but it's going to become exact again in December. And as a matter of fact, this lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces is locked in the Saturn-Jupiter square. The new moon in the sign of Virgo is also going to be locked in the Saturn-Jupiter square. When we get to Sagittarius season, the new moon there is also going to be locked in the Saturn-Jupiter square. And then when we get to March next year, when we have another eclipse on a Pisces-Virgo axis, that one is going to be locked in between Saturn and Neptune again. I think Jupiter is going to be there as well. Um, so my point here is that um, this blockage that you came up against uh, in the third week of August is not really something that's going to go away after the first week of August, but rather it's something that you're going to have to work through continuously over the course of at least six months, but maybe more considering that the new moon in Sagittarius season is going to be locked in that and that one is going to end during the full moon in Sagittarius, which is in Gemini season next year. Um, and, and the next eclipse um, in March as well is going to uh, involve um, the same Saturn, um, Saturn Neptune dynamic. So this, be prepared that this is something that's not going to go away very easily, and it's going to um, require quite some work and quite some realignment uh, before you are able to move forward. You're going to have to revise down certain dreams, put it that way, to kind of change things in order to reconcile them with with material reality. Um, that kind of, uh, to, to be a bit more realistic about what is it that you can do financially. Um, I mean, what is it that you can do creatively, but with respect to financial considerations? What is it that you can do in, with your business? What is it that you can do with your creative work? Or what is it that you can do with your kids in a way? But, uh, but that's going to have to undergo some sort of more sober and realistic reassessment because of some developments um, around joint finances and resources and it's not going to be a one-off third week of august thing it's going to be a little bit longer than that um, and it's going to take several steps and kind of like gradual working through it before you're able to come on the other side 
Sagittarius Suns and Sagittarius Risings, 18th September 2024, we have a lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces happening in your fourth house of home, family, living situation, living circumstances, um, and property, real estate, the place where you live, your home country, your town, your city, uh, your attitude towards your family, your um, attitude towards uh, homeland, and uh, just the question of settling down. Uh, this is the first eclipse on the Pisces Virgo axis in nine years. Over the course of the next year and a half, two years, several pivotal events will happen on this axis that are going to completely transform uh, the way you're known to the world. Uh, what is it that people know you for? What's the legacy you're leaving behind? As well as where is it that you are building this legacy from? And um, again, your attitude towards home, family, living situation. Uh, where you live, property, um, things like that. So big upgrade, big change of the status quo is in the cards, but that's not going to be a one-off thing. It's going to be a process that's going to happen gradually and unfold step by step with every eclipse. This is only the first eclipse. It's a lunar eclipse, which means it's internal, more emotional ending. Um, and also it's a little bit weaker because the nodes of faith are still on the um, Aries Libra axis. They haven't fully shifted and we have two more eclipses on the Aries Libra axis. So this isn't really that powerful in the sense that we've seen more powerful eclipses. Um, but this one is still an important development that's happening, a closure of some kind when it comes to where you live, who you live with. Um, a chapter is ending with when it comes to the way that you relate to your family, um, the way that you relate to your parents. Um, and this chapter is ending in a conjunction to Neptune. So there is a sense, a little bit of disappointment, a sense that there was a big dream that didn't really live up to the expectations. Uh, perhaps you had um, great um, dreams about how you're going to have like this big house, but it's not quite panning out that way. Maybe you had these expectations that you were going to be able to, with this specific person, to form some sort of um, amazing family life but it's not quite turning out that way it doesn't mean it's bad it just means it doesn't live up to the dream and it leaves a sense of disappointment and potentially a sense of martyrdom and victimhood as well with neptune and also um this could be about your relationship to your home country if you live abroad um and kind of um, a sense of disappointment uh, that you left your home country or a sense of disappointment that you stayed in your home country when you had the chance to leave, um, that, that kind of thing. Um, be very careful if you are signing some documents regarding property, um, because Neptune is shady, it's kind of, it's not transparent, not everything is as it looks. Uh, it's a lunar eclipse in Pisces with Neptune, it's emotional, so there is also the potential for some sort of um, difficult situation with family member that gets a little bit out of control emotionally. Um, at the time of this um, eclipse, the ruler, Jupiter, is going to be in your Gemini 7th house. So a one-on-one -on -one partner is very significantly involved in this ending. Could be your spouse, for example, or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, um, let's say you bring them to your family and they're kind of disappointed with that with this person and you're disappointed with them that they you know don't support your relationship or that that kind of thing could also be that there is a very promising partner uh, business-wise but your family isn't there to fully support you while you you, you try to go uh, on that new business adventure let's say um, and at the time of the eclipse, Jupiter will be um, um, squaring Saturn in your Pisces fourth house and Saturn will be opposing Mercury um, in your um, in your Virgo 10th house of career, public image and reputation. So there is the possibility of a contract ending here or some sort of proposal or bid um, that is uh, being rejected. It's kind of turning very cold, very icy. Um, and this eclipse, this emotional, a bit disappointing ending uh, in your fourth house is locked in that Saturn-Jupiter square across your 
uh, home family in important one-on-one -on -one partnerships and this um, dynamic first became exact on the 19th of August and then for a few days afterwards pretty much that entire week but um, this will become exact again in your season in Sagittarius season in December of this year uh, and it's going to impact the new moon so your new your personal new beginning so what I'm trying to say here is that this Saturn Jupiter dynamic this challenge that you're coming up against this blockage from home family living situation um, and partnerships um, this is not going to be a one-off thing it's going to impact you quite significantly again because it impacts the new moon in your sign um, and then the new moon in Virgo so that's happening on the uh, 3rd 4th of September um, that one is going to be locked in the Saturn Jupiter square and then when we get to your season your new moon is going to be locked in that square as well and then next year we have another eclipse uh, on the Pisces Virgo axis in March and that one is also going to be locked with Saturn with Neptune uh, Jupiter is going to be in there as well so um, there's going to be uh, th this blockage that I mentioned and I have a separate video on the Saturn Jupiter square um, that one is going to go on for a while and it's going to get some work to get through it it's not going to be a one-off thing um, that happens in the third week of August and then we get through it but rather it's going to be a dynamic that's going to play very heavily very it's going to be a very impactful story um, for possibly the next one year at least until the full moon in Sagittarius which is going to be in Gemini season next year um, but also potentially all the way really a year so be prepared that this is not really going to go away as quickly and as easily as you hope for um, and uh, it's going to require some gradual working through this um, before you're able to kind of put it behind you Capricorn suns and Capricorn risings 18th of September 2024 we have a lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces in your third house of communication the mind what is it that you use your mind for what is it that you read what is it that you learn your skills upskilling reskilling writing communication business proposals business ideas reading new books putting out content putting out ideas as well um, this is the first eclipse but we're gonna have more <laughs> uh, basically over the course of the next year and a half two years this area of your sky the mind and what is it that is of interest to you uh, your Pisces Virgo axis is going to see major developments a major upgrades the landscape of your mind will look quite differently in terms of the intellectual pursuits that you have the way that you write the way that you structure your um, your ideas your proposals uh, you're going to learn a lot um, about um, foreign lands foreign cultures the global worlds um, different ideas religion philosophy um, academic level uh, ideas um, all of this is just the Pisces Virgo axis these eclipses are opening up the door of a flood of new ideas and new ways of picturing yourself in the world your role within your, the immediate community as well as your role um, when it comes to the larger world but this is going to be a process that's going to go on for about a year and a half two years uh, this is only the first eclipse and uh, it's a lunar eclipse so it's internal ending and it is um, with the nodes of faith still on the Aries Libra axis so they haven't fully shifted they haven't shifted at all we still have two more eclipses on the Aries Libra axis so this is definitely a kind of weaker eclipse and a kind of smaller development for you the major developments are still going to be in your 10th house 4th house axis but there's definitely 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 a fresh air and a new wind blowing when it comes to um, your mind and what is it that you want to research uh, learn about what kind of skills you want to gain um, and things like that um, also your relationship potentially with um, 
with your siblings, with your neighbors, with your um, immediate community, and with your uh, cousins, siblings um, in the neighborhood that you live in. So it's a lunar eclipse. It's an ending of some kind, uh, and it is conjoining um, Neptune in Pisces, which basically means that it's going to be quite emotional, probably foggy. Not everything is going to be clear. Something is ending, but there isn't really that much visibility over how exactly this is ending. Um, and potentially somebody will be victimized. There's going to be that sense of victimhood or that sense of, of injustice or um, something very kind of emotional in theory. This could impact emotional relationships with cousins, brothers, sisters, um, also just extended relatives. It could be some sort of uh, emotional fight with a neighbor or um, um, kind of a former classmate or something like that. But this could also be the um, ending of some sort of business proposal, the ending of some sort of uh, business project that you've been writing, a rejection of some kind as well. Uh, there's, there's this sense of something that looked amazing um, ends up in a way that's not as amazing as thought. And it calls for more readjustment between the dream and the reality. The ruler of this eclipse is Jupiter, and Jupiter is in your Gemini sixth house of day-to-day -day work, colleague, and co-workers. So there is the possibility that this, um, that th you, you were working on some project at work, you were bidding for it, you were hoping to get it, you were hoping to get funding for something, um, you were hoping to push through some sort of expansion, some sort of import-export deal, um, and it's not quite turning out as, as expected. There is a sense of disappointment and Saturn is going to be opposing Mercury um, across the Pisces Virgo axis at the time of this eclipse in squaring Jupiter. So um, with Saturn and Mercury, there is indeed a kind of like um, rejection or determination of a contract, um, something, some sort of written... Um, a written proposal, written document, written content is being given the cold shoulder. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is the ultimate ending and so it's never gonna pan out, but it would require some readjustment, especially during the Jupiter retrograde period. Um, so it's not, it's not really gonna be as easy to pull off as initially imagined. This eclipse is locked in a Saturn-Jupiter square. The new moon in Virgo is going to be locked in the Saturn-Jupiter square. In December, when we get to Sagittarius season, the new moon there is going to be locked in the Saturn-Jupiter square. And next year, the eclipse in March on the Pisces-Virgo axis is also going to be locked in that Saturn-Jupiter square. And um, so that's going to be kind of like a longer dynamic. Um, it, this square first became exact on the 19th of August. But it's not a one-off thing. Um, after the, the uh, retrogrades, we're going to have another exact Saturn-Jupiter square in December in Sagittarius season. And so um, that's going to impact the lunar cycle that starts there. And that lunar cycle is going to end with the full moon in Sagittarius, which is going to happen in Gemini season next year. So long story short, this Saturn-Jupiter dynamic, uh, on which I have a separate video, is going to be a longer thing to pull through to work through it's gonna it's gonna require several waves of steps that have to be taken before um all of us are ready to kind of put it behind us and and move on to the other side of this you also want to keep in mind that saturn and jupiter are going to exit pisces and gemini kind of together and that saturn jupiter square is going to be operational um all in Aries and in Cancer. So right now the Saturn Jupiter square is operational across your third and sixth houses, but Saturn and Jupiter are going to keep moving forward kind of together, kind of in a lockstep. And at some point they're going to be again in a square, but that's going to happen in your Aries fourth house of home, family, living situation, and um, your Cancer seventh house of one on partnerships and alliances. So definitely. Um, kind of stock up on some patience because 
big beautiful dreams and actual reality are going to require quite some continuous work to realign before you're able to really um, build something and move on. Aquarius suns and Aquarius risings, 18 September 2024, a lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces conjoining Neptune happening in your second house of money and finances. This is the first eclipse on this axis in nine years. Uh, over the course of the next year and a half, two years, we're going to have several pivotal key turning points uh, after which your financial access will be quite transformed. The way that you make money, the way that you spend money and your value system, what is it that you see worthy of paying for and what is it that you see worthy of you um, investing your resource, investing yourself into uh, are going to look quite differently. Um, a period of change is in the cards and it starts kind of with this eclipse. This is a lunar eclipse, so it is an ending. It's internal, it's emotional, it's conjoining Neptune, which makes it even more emotional. Um, and also the nodes of faith are still on the Aries Libra axis. We still have two more eclipses there. So it's not really uh, that big of an eclipse, so to speak. It's not that big of a development and it's also internal. It's emotional, but it's not um, It's not the most powerful eclipse uh, we've seen, certainly not. And certainly not you as a fixed sign with all of the eclipses that we had <laughs> over Uranus. Um, <clears throat> so um, this is an ending of some kind. Um, when it comes to income stream, when it comes to uh, what is it that you make money off or um, kind of what is it that you want to spend your money on, all the resources that you have, what is a worthy investment of them and whatever it is that you've been investing yourself and your resources into, is that really worthwhile? With a lunar eclipse on Neptune, there is a sense of disappointment. Neptune is associated with illusions um, and also hidden things, uh, the fine print. The, the, it's uh, kind of uh, difficult to get firm hold of kind of um, symbol. And so if, well, basically it's better if you do not um, <laughs> if you do not sign any serious kind of like uh, long-term business documents, b financial commitments, or something like that. Um, something is ending. Something that started in March. Um, something is ending in a way that's a little bit disappointing. In a way that leaves a it's a bit bittersweet. Something that promised to be a great source of income or a great source of sense of self-worth uh, isn't really panning out that way. In a sense, um, you thought you were going to earn a certain amount of money, but you weren't able to, it didn't, it didn't, the project didn't bring the, the amount of money that you were hoping for. Um, you thought it was going to feel great. You thought this would help you kind of build up more sense of self-worth, self-respect, self-esteem. But that's also not really that great. It doesn't mean that um, all is lost. It doesn't mean that you're not getting anything. But it's not as great as the initial promise was. Um, at the time of the eclipse, we also have Jupiter, the ruler of the eclipse, um, in your fifth house of uh, projects, children, creative work of art, your own business, uh, something that you are kind of solely responsible for. And so you have that kind of uh, room in order to really develop a vision and then implement it, that kind of thing. Um, so indeed, it could be about um, an ending in a, in a project, in your own work of art, um, in your own um business if you have your own company or something like that and jupiter is going to be in a t square to saturn and mercury across your financial axis so indeed there is a rejection here a termination of a contract a termination of some kind of source of income or at least the rejection that another source of income isn't gonna materialize at least not this time and it's probably related to uh your again funding for your own project, for your own business, uh, potentially some sort of covering some sort of bill 
that is um, related to your children. But overall, there is a sense of ending and a potentially a sense of injustice in a sense that that's not that wasn't quite transparent. It wasn't quite honest. It's not quite fair as well. Um, that kind of um, a feeling. Be careful because it involves your financial access and also be careful because this Saturn Jupiter dynamic within which this eclipse is kind of closed. Um, it first became exact on the 19th of August, but it's going to become exact again in Sagittarius season. And also the new moon in Virgo is going to be locked in it. The new moon in Sagittarius is going to be locked in that Saturn Jupiter square. And then next year, the eclipse in um, in March is also going to be locked in with Saturn, Neptune and Jupiter. So this dynamic that we're only getting the first glimpses of at the time of this lunar eclipse, uh, it's going to be a long term thing. It's not going to be something that's going to go away um, after mid August and uh, pff, mid September. Um, it's going to be something that's going to require continuous work in order to achieve workable realignment between material resources as well as um, projects, creative work of art and children. Pisces, Suns and Pisces Risings, 18th September 2024, Lunar Eclipse in your Pisces first house conjoining Neptune. This is the first eclipse on the Pisces Virgo axis on your first house, seventh house axis uh, in nine years. Over the course of the next year and a half, two years, there are going to be several pivotal events that are going to unfold in your life that are going to leave you with a very different idea about what you can be in this lifetime, a new career path, a new life roadmap, new partnerships as well. It's going to be a process. It's not going to be a one off event. There are going to be several key pivotal turning points around the eclipses. Um, but overall, it's a journey and it starts pretty much with this uh, lunar eclipse in your first house. Um, you want to keep in mind that the nodes of faith are still on the Aries Libra axis. We still have two more eclipses on the Aries Libra axis. So this eclipse is not that strong and not that powerful. Also, it is a lunar eclipse, which means it's an ending and it's kind of internal. Um, so don't expect some sort of firecrackers and fireworks uh, happening in the most visible, kind of loud and noisy way in your life. But nevertheless, it is significant. Um, there is an ending and it is conjoining Neptune, which indicates a little bit of sense of nostalgia and the ending of a dream, the ending of some idea that you had about yourself that is coming to an ending. It doesn't mean it's bad. It is a little bit disappointing though. It doesn't mean that you didn't get anything, you didn't achieve anything. It doesn't mean that the nothing materialized from the original dream, but it just means that the end result is not as amazing as the dream. And with a lunar eclipse, it's kind of like emotional high point and on Neptune, that makes it even more emotionally and it's happening in your first house. So there is something that's kind of ending when it comes to your identity and the way you see yourself and the way you imagine yourself, the way you feature in relationships, the way you uh, build your life and your career that's coming to an end in a way that's a little bit sad and a little bit emotional, a little bit like it's the end of an era. And it was a great era, but it's not going to be able to go on forever. And it's kind of like there's definitely a new, an air of change blowing um, in your first house. Um, and this um, is very likely to be associated with uh, the um, separation from a partner. And I say that because at the time of the eclipse, we're also going to have a Saturn Mercury opposition um, across your first house, seventh house axis. Saturn Mercury is the ending of a contract, could be your contract, could be the contract of a, you know, kind of like a, a business partner or a kind of like very important, very close to heart collaborator. Um, um, and it's also a sense of rejection, a kind of a, a proposal that was that is rejected. Um, and the ruler 
of this eclipse is uh, your ruling planet it is uh, in your fourth house uh, in the sign of Gemini squaring Saturn and Mercury this kind of it almost indicates as if um, um, you are going home and so um, kind of uh, going back to your roots going back to your family um, and, and involved in a lot of uh, home house matters and this is what's bringing an ending to um, this partnership to this collaboration to to a relationship that's very important for you on a one-to-one -one basis and that is also bringing to a closure a whole chapter of how it, how is it that you thought you can be in this lifetime there are a lot of developments in your home with your family perhaps your family requires you to be more present for them than usual perhaps there are a lot of developments in the physical property within which you live um, and this is creating some sort of sense of professional limitation and professional restrictions and um, it's leading to a very bittersweet realization that a way you were up until this point in a way that you thought you can be in the future is no longer really practical and not really sustainable um this could also be a i just want to point it out that jupiter in your fourth house could also be about your uh, home country your hometown or something like that so this could be kind of like um the ending of a chapter that you spent abroad or something like that uh, and you now realize that you have to kind of rethink some things around uh, home country as well um, so this eclipse is kind of locked in the Saturn Jupiter square on which I have a separate video but it's important to note that this square is going to be operational for quite some time to come it became exact on the 19th of August uh, but it doesn't end with that third week of August um, because the new moon in the sign of Virgo is locked in that Saturn Jupiter square this eclipse is locked in the Saturn Jupiter square um, when we get to Sagittarius season when the focus is going to be on your career public image reputation professional legacy uh, the way that you are known to the larger society um, your business opportunities, your relationships with managers, there's going to be a new moon there, there's going to be a new beginning and that new beginning is also going to be locked in a Saturn Jupiter square and then uh, next year in March we're going to have um, eclipses uh, we're going to have another eclipse on the Pisces Virgo axis and that one is also going to be uh, very similar to this one so um, this dynamic between your home family matters and your professional path and the restrictions and limitations and the need to restructure things in a way that takes into account uh, limitations that are not, that are outside of your control um, this is not going to be a one-off thing for the 19th of August but it's going to be a continuous process uh, something that in order for you to go through it to work through it you're going to have to uh, it's not going to be a, a one step thing it's going to be several steps perhaps the kind of situation where you take uh, you know kind of like two steps forward and then one step back it's going to take a while to work through it's going to take a while before you can resolve it and move on and forget about it so to speak and what i mean by that is that uh what's really kind of problematic here is just that the new moons the lunar cycles that run for um, six months they are locked in that Saturn Jupiter square so the Saturn Jupiter thing is a is a, is a twice thing so to speak happens once in mid-August and then once in December but it leaves its mark on the DNA of the lunar cycles and they run for six months so be prepared to have to deal with this for quite a while and uh, like don't don't be surprised if there's some professional opportunity you're planning on and then all of a sudden you realize that Fort House matters are kind of um, a bit you know demanding your attention so to speak uh, and kind of blocking you in a way because um, that is uh, like that that's expected to come up to the surface now and then again and again over time sometimes more severely sometimes 
not so much. Um, but nevertheless, it's going to be kind of like a theme running at the background um, for at least about a year from now. So good to keep in mind.